The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Safina Insecticide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Welcome to Real Agriculture Soybean School. I'm Kara Oosterhuis. In this episode, I talked to Dennis Lang, who's the Interstate Development Specialist with Manitoba Agriculture. Dennis and I talk about the threat of soybean cyst nematode and some of the steps you can take around your field and your farm in order to prevent it from coming into your soils. Well, soybean cyst nematode has been on our radar for the last number of years. Um, we're very close to the U.S. border right now. We're only about two miles away from the U.S. border, uh, Pemina County across the border has had some uh, confirmed cases of soybean cyst nematode. So we know at some point in time we're going to have that uh, come into Manitoba. Um, but we're still in those early stages yet. So there's a lot of things we can kind of do to help you know, maybe slow that progression down. Uh, one of those things is if you're purchasing equipment from areas that you know have had soybean cyst nematode, uh, make sure that equipment is clean before it comes in onto your farm. Uh, if it's not clean before it comes to your farm, uh, designate an area in your field, uh, on your farm to clean that equipment so before it, you take it out to the field to help prevent any, any of the, uh, the, the cyst nematodes from being transported. So can you tell me about some of the methods you can use to clean besides, you know, spending eight hours pressure washing your equipment? Well, the, the biggest thing is just, you know, the first thing you should really be doing is when you get the piece of equipment home, take your air compressor and blow off any of the loose dirt that you see. That's the first step. Um, I think going through that, looking at all the nooks and crannies, and it is a bit of a process. Um, generally, once you do that once on your field, then you know it's going to be it's going to stay on your your equipment's going to stay on your farm, so you you do lessen the risk there. Um, if you're real concerned, um, you know you should still do some pressure washing to try to remove any of those soil particles. Um, we what we do in a, in our job here is we try to wear booties when we go into fields to help prevent any disease transmission that way. Um, there are some disinfectants you can use on your equipment if you're really concerned with it. But I think the bigger picture is just making sure that, you know, in your rotation, if you're in an area where you think soybean cyst nematode might move in, uh, we're close to the Red River here. Um, the, uh, these nematodes can move in on soil particles, move in through floodwaters, through equipment transport from, from different regions into our region. Um, I think trying to do as, as much as you can before you get into the field and then, you know, as part of your rotation, you may want to look at soybean cyst nematode um, um, resistant varieties in your rotation as well to help slow that progress. What growth stage do you usually see it at? You typically see it a little bit later in the, in the growing season. Um, you wouldn't necessarily see it now. You know, uh, typically if you're scouting for it, probably, you know, July, August is when you start to see some, um, you might try to find some. Um, but it's really, they can be very difficult to find. So because we haven't had any confirmed cases yet, um, with, with the surveys that they have been doing so far, um, they have some suspect fields. They're doing further lab analysis to determine, you know, whether or not, uh, you know, uh, to confirm their research, I guess, is what you, what you want to call it. So at this point, we don't have any confirmed cases, but it's only a matter of time. It's like anything. It, it will eventually come here in Manitoba. Well, it, it's interesting because with soybean cyst nematode, uh, when you actually see symptoms in the field, uh, well, you'll probably, it might resemble other things like IDC, for example, iron deficiency chlorosis. You might see some of those symptoms. Um, these levels have to build in your soil over a number of years. So it's not like you're going to all of a sudden see, find a nematode in your field and all of a sudden you're going to have yield loss. It's going to take a few years to build up. So really, with any type of disease, soil transmission, probably the bigger areas that you might see it in would be entrance ways to fields because that's where a lot of your equipment you know, comes in and typically might have more soil on it. You might see more areas uh, uh, with that happening as well. But really, if you're scouting, I think the biggest thing is if you see some uh, symptoms through the growing season, IDC issues, maybe check those plants out, uh, check those plants out, dig up the roots to see if you see any, uh, any um, cysts uh, cyst on the uh, roots themselves. Um, they do look differently than a nodule. You know, quite a size difference. They're quite small compared to a, a soybean nodule. So, um, but and if you have any any specific questions, contact you know uh, a specialist like myself or Maria Tunida. Uh, they're always looking for more fields to survey through the growing season as well. So it uh, might be worthwhile uh, uh, reaching out to them if you have some concerns. 
So when you say you're not seeing any confirmed cases, is that prairie-wide or is that just Manitoba specifically? That's in Manitoba specifically that I'm referring to. Uh, it, it has been an, an issue in Ontario, but Manitoba, I guess we could say where we, we haven't seen any issues with soybean cyst nematode as of yet. But in North Dakota, for example, um, there are other crops that provide carrier years. Uh, edible beans or dry beans in North Dakota, there has been a confirmed case of... Uh, soybean cyst nematode in dry beans and affecting the stands there already. So they provide a carryover year. Uh, the area that we're currently in now, it's not really a big dry bean area, um, but if you go west of, uh, west of Altona, uh, that becomes more of, a, more of a challenge there because there's more dry beans growing in that region.